Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, I'll be playing in the Tier 10 German Tech Tree Tank Destroyer, the Jagdpanzer E100, a vehicle that features an insanely deadly gun and even pretty impressive armor. This is a vehicle that I have always found incredibly fun to play, and in the later updates of the game, Wargaming has buffed it and buffed it and buffed it, to a point now where it's got 2,150 base hit points, and enough armor that the majority of mediums and even lower pen heavies are actually going to struggle to pen this thing frontally, and if you're side scraping or angling correctly, you can actually do really, really well at getting bounces in the YAG. Add that into the fact that the vehicle has an insanely deadly gun, high levels of DPM, and it's not even that slow, and this is an incredibly strong and underrated beast. It definitely requires requires a bit of skill to master, but if played correctly, this can be definitely one of the most influential tanks on the battlefield. Usually, I recommend to play this tank in platoon. Somebody in a medium or a light, and then you can play the Yag. That way, you don't have to worry about getting flanked, and you don't need to worry about your medium flank falling apart while you do your job on the heavy side. The best thing about this tank is it doesn't take up a heavy slot, which means you can have three or even four heavies on your team and still get a Yag. So, at this moment in the game, the 50B on the enemy team, I actually know the player, and I told my teammate, I said, I bet he's going to roll around this corner. Let's wait, and guess what? We just took 1,560 damage off of his tank in a matter of half a second of shooting. That is absolutely insane. But this game just keeps getting better and better. We roll around the corner and find a mouse. So we both shoot this mouse, bringing him down an additional... 1,500 hit points. I mean, that is absolutely insane. I wiggle my YAG and get a bounce from the enemy 183. At this point, we're reloading again. My teammate's gonna get the shell right out before me, but it doesn't matter all too much. We still get the clear, and a basically full health mouse was turned into nothing, like, just crumbled. So, now I decided to try and deal with the mediums and the 50B, who's still alive, off to my side. And I told my teammate, I said, you go deal with the 183, because the worst thing that we could have happen in massive German tanks is have a 183 firing Hesh at our rear. So he's going to go deal with the Fe2 and 5B183, and I'm going to go head over towards the mediums to secure the side of the map. You wouldn't think double Yag would work pretty well, but... Oh! 1500 damage into the enemy TVP. And just like that, we've been able to deal 3360 damage in this battle. I thought this was just a really fun replay to showcase the Jagdpanzer E100's capabilities. Now, not much else really happens in this game. I do get one more shell out into the enemy 121B, which is really all I wanted to shoot anyway. The 121B has, what, 700 and something hit points, and I was kind of waiting for him to make a poke. He does. Unfortunately, we low roll a little bit, and the worst part is my 50B rams me, which stops me from being able to back up, unfortunately killing me. But it doesn't matter all too much. We are still able to deal 4,085 damage and come out with a pretty crazy victory in the end. So, a very fun battle for the Jagdpanzer E100. The vehicle is just insanely deadly. You can see that my teammate also did 3,200 this game, both of us finishing first and second on the team. It's just insane what you can get away with in this tank. It has crazy good HE Alpha at 1,200. It's got 800 damage per shot and some of the best pen values out there. It even has solid DPM and you'd think its accuracy is pretty bad, but if you're running the loadout like I am, I am personally running refined gun because its aiming time is only four seconds. That's actually better than even a lot of heavies. So I run calibrated, obviously, to get that ridiculously good 400 and almost 20 millimeters of pen plus to get that bit of HE pen. And then add that onto the fact that the vehicle is actually pretty accurate at 0.31 dispersion when you're aimed in. And, I mean, the tank is just a beast. It's not even that slow, to be honest, when it comes to power to weight. 
Now we arrive to battle number two, and funny enough, we are once again on the same map in the same spawn with the same Toon Mate. However, this battle is just a little bit different. Instead of him being in a Yag, he's in a TVP 5051. Up against us, we do have some deadly opponents. We got a Karo 45 ton, 183, 268, Sheridan, T95 E6, TVP, and a WZ113 GFT. So they got a lot of vehicles that are incredibly strong. Some of them hit really hard. Some of them have autoloaders. They really don't have any tank that I would even consider remotely bad on their team. So starting off, we play a little passive. We see if anybody gets spotted going towards A. Nothing gets spotted towards A. So I'm going to move up a little bit. And we're going to see if we can get any shells out. So there's the Sheridan. I got spotted and I saw my tune mate get spotted. So I was like, he's got to be in that bush. So just like that, a little bit of knowledge and boom, a 753 damage shot. So we got a T95E6 over at base C. And I don't know if I'm not spotted right now or what, but he just takes it like a champ. 866 hit points slapped right off of his vehicles. Two shots and we are already up to 1,620 damage. So at this moment, I had two options in my mind. Right now, I was just waiting for the E6. I figured, you know what? He might poke again, but I am spotted, so... Eh, the chances are most likely not. But I'm going to wait just a little bit to make sure that he literally never crosses this again, stopping any people that I don't want getting into our spawn. So now that it's been about 10 seconds and I'm unspotted, I'm going to leave our side of the map and make our way over towards our enemies, being the 183 Karo and the E6. Oh my rats, that 183 just got turned into toothpaste. Man thought he could actually do something, and uh, yeah, he's dead. I will tell you for a fact, hands down, this tank is much, much better than the 183, because it actually is armor, and it also has a lot more HP. There you go, nice 840 shot into the enemy T95E6, and yeah, this game's been going pretty well so far. E6 gets a lucky bounce, but I'm not going to waste my time on that vehicle. There's a lot of people out there that are always like, oh, you should always get low health kills, but there's a certain extent to when you shouldn't. If you're in a vehicle like a Yag and you deal 800 damage, it's usually a lot more beneficial to snap something like a Karo, take 740 off, rather than shoot a tank at 20 health, unless you really have to. So the IS-7 finishes off the Karo. Just like that, we are up to 4,000 damage, and this has literally been a cakewalk. All that's left is the enemy 26A and a bonk. Thank you very much for your hit points. 4,734 damage in this battle. Not much else really happens this game. So there you go. Once again, just the Yag absolutely steamrolling the enemy. And it's so easy to do so as long as you know how to angle it. And angling is definitely one of the major skills you're going to need to use when driving a Yag, because depending on how good you are at angling, you will get a lot of bounces. The lower plate and the entire hull is exactly the same armor as an E100. I mean, heck, the name is a Yag Panzer E100. So the lower plate, if angled properly, will be not penetrable with standard ammo. So anybody who thinks they can pen you a standard, you can angle it properly and get actually pretty solid bounces in the lower plate. Same for the superstructure. The superstructure on this tank is base about 340 if you're running enhanced armor. And if you're using a little bit of gun depression and you are angling the tank properly like this, then the superstructure is going to be more like 360-ish millimeters thick. What that means is that vehicles, even like the IS-4 running Cali, will struggle to actually penetrate a hull down YAG. Add that into the fact this tank has insane levels of DPM. Its HE can literally slap a side-scraping heavy for four, five hundred, and yeah, this can easily be one of the best tier 10s out there. But it's obviously got some big downsides, and you gotta keep those downsides in mind while playing the tank. Sure, it looks like I'm just driving into the front line and you'll Following. But you got to keep in mind this tank is massive. It's very easy to get behind, and anything that gets behind you, if it's an autoloader or literally anything that gets behind you, your tank is toast. So you got to keep that in mind. You are not mobile enough to just scrape a TVP off your rear, and you're definitely not going to turn around to shoot it. So you always got to keep that in mind. That's why I always recommend to play in a platoon when using this tank. But at the end of the day, the Yag is a fun vehicle. It's a vehicle that definitely requires a learning curve, but it can be incredible. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.